Welcome to Gulfstream Park. It is February 28, 2014. Christina Bosanak is here with our men, Stephen Skaggs. And Stephen, got a night. We had some early rain here today, but it's it's opening up right now. It's actually a beautiful day. It's very. It's a lot cooler than it's been in the, over the last week or so. Yeah, it rained last night. There was dogs, or there were cones on the track this morning. In our world, they're called dogs. But yeah, the track was a little damp, and I would say the turf course has a little moisture in it too. But still, looks like fast and firm. So let me ask you, in, in terms of the way the track has been playing, not only this so far this week and even last weekend, it's been playing towards speed. Do you think the rain is going to change that at all? No, I see it the same way. One thing I've noticed is the turf races on the inner turf, speed in the rail, that's what you want. Make the lead, get over, get on the fence, and they're merry-go-round races. We got two of them today, inner turf course races. And something to look forward to. We also, another thing to look forward to today, we have that Rainbow Six, and uh, there is a carryover up over $1.69 million, and that starts in race five. So a lot to look forward to. But, uh, Stephen, we also have a really, really uh, great uh, card on tap for tomorrow. And I was, uh, I was excited yesterday because there was a horse that came out here and schooled and his name is No Nay Never. And No Nay Never, he's a group one winner in France. He won the Prix Morny and that was the last August. And he also won at Royal Ascot. And he's uh, fr from the Wesley Ward Barn. He's just, he's a spectacular looking horse. He didn't even turn a hair. Very, very attractive animal. He's going to be running in the swale tomorrow. And Havana, who is also up for the uh, championship, he was a great stakes winner for Todd Fletcher and uh, won the Champagne. He's going to be in the Havana. He's also in the Swale. So it's a, it looks like a great race. Right. Not very often you get two grade one winners making their first start in 2014. But I want to see No Nay Never stay undefeated. And I know Coolmore owns both horses. They own Havana and No Nay Never, the two grade one winners. How do you see it unfolding? Well, I, they own, uh, they do own Havana. They also own uh, part owners in, uh, in uh, No Nay Never. And I just, my thought with No Nay Never is this. He won the Prix Morny that was six furlongs, and that's the furthest he's gone. Now we're stretching to seven furlongs. I don't think in terms of on paper and uh, what uh, Wesley Ward has said, I don't think that that should affect him, although he also seems to be, or he sounds like he's a pretty headstrong colt, and Wesley's been trying to slow him down in the morning to ease back on him so he doesn't get too pumped up. Do you think that might work against him? No, I think it's seven eighths race. I think he'll naturally be close, but I think he can pass horses. And the seven eighths doesn't bother me because the Royals Ascot, he probably galloped out three eighths of a mile past the field. I think he'll get a mile no problem. And the way he's training on dirt, I'm not going to have a problem with the surface either. And Royal Ascot, it's such a different surface uh, than the race, uh, the race, the race courses, the turf courses here in America. It's a lot heavier, and it seems to, uh, you know, the horse, if they can get, cover six of uh, six or five and a half, five furlongs there, then they certainly, I think, would be able to extend it here. So it's a race to look forward to tomorrow. We also have the Palm Beach, uh, Storming Inti. He's on a winning streak, and I think uh, the only time he was defeated was in his debut. So that's also a really nice race. And, uh, but uh, Mr. Speaker's coming back, and uh, he didn't really handle the dirt last time, and he's running back this time. Right, and I think you'll appreciate the mile and eighth distance. We'll see if Stormy Enti will carry it that far. He's a proven winner at a mile and a sixteenth. I'm interested to see Cabo Cat, Mark Henning's horse. He's actually faced Mr. Speaker and Stormy Enti, so we'll see if he can finally catch up to him with the extra ground. He finished a really good third behind Stormy Enti um, and last time out, and he was closing. He was flying late. He's drawn the, the 12 hole this time, but uh, very, very nice field, solid field, and a great card on top for tomorrow. Let's get into today's card. We do have uh, 10 races, and we'll start off with the race one, which is a 6250 claiming event. It is a mile on the main track. There's a scratch, number five, Halo's Gate. And I went, it's changed a little bit. I went with a number two, Izzy Power. And uh, who's coming into this off of a third place effort? Now that was at Calder, but uh, I think fits in with this bunch. Right. I Five to two with Louis Saez aboard the two, Izzy Power. I went with the one Highland Series. Sarah, trained by Giuseppe I. Discernia, ridden by Dylan Davis. This mare gets a five pound allowance. And if you look, the horse is two for six at Gulfstream, one for one at the distance. Ron Nicoletti's angle, turf to dirt. We'll see if it works out here. 
We do have a couple of jockey changes in there as well. Number six, three Bs will not will be written. The program says uh, it says otherwise, but it will be Elvis Trujillo. And number seven, Zephy will have a Gilbert Chamafi in the irons. On to the second race on today's card, and uh, this uh, kicks off the early pick four. It is a starter optional claiming event with a claiming price of twenty thousand dollars. Five furlongs on the turf course and a couple scratches. Number one, Wildcat Creek, and number. Number 11, PJ's Magical Wink, and I went with the number eight, and that is Thomas Hill uh, from the Gary Contessa Barn. Uh, coming into this, of a couple of uh, second place efforts. I thought pretty good efforts, and I was, and I liked this horse last time, and I'm, I'm going to give him another shot to uh, get the job done today. It seems like all these horses have been facing each other. Didn't take it, Thomas Hill, Wire Funds. They're all beating up on each other. Here's a race with Thomas Hill. He's running at the end, trained by Gary Contessa. I went with the nine wire funds, who's also in this race. But the reason I went with wire funds, last time Joe Rocco rode him, and you can see him coming up on the fence, the six horse. Paco Lopez is back aboard. Paco's four for five on this horse, so I'm thinking that Paco makes a difference with the nine wire funds. Yeah, wire funds, uh, I think of a horse that's difficult to leave out, although I did, and I was a little bit torn just in terms of the horses I used. I did use number five. It didn't take it. As well, and uh, I know that uh, I think uh, you did as well. And uh, also, uh, Drunken Love. What do you do with Drunken Love? I see that uh, you use Drunken Love as well. It's a racehorse. 20 for 51, 13 seconds. This horse gives it his all every time. He just got caught on the wire last time by a nice horse trained by Todd Pletcher. So I think it's between the seven and nine. Who wants to win the most? They both do. It'll be a horse race. Yeah, it's a very competitive race. On to the third race, which is a 12-5 claiming event. It is a five and a half furlongs on the main track. And uh, it's a race that seems to have a lot of speed in it. And I went uh, with a number one, and that was Baby Butterscotch. And who is going to be showing speed? Although you went with one of the other uh, speed horses, it looks like uh, number two. Uh, Beckowitz. Right, there is a lot of speed in here. And another thing I notice is three or four of these horses don't want to pass either. They've yeah. never passed a horse in their life. So I went with what I thought was the speed of the speed, thinking the two Beckowitz would bury the four, six, and seven trying to chase her. But I like your one, Baby Butterscotch, because that horse has proven to be able to pass horses and is a two time winner in here facing some one time winners. Yeah, there are a couple of changes in there. And actually, there's an, uh, a, a work. Uh, unpublished work for number seven. That's It's My Business. And on February 27th, there was a three furlong work at uh, in 38 and four, and that was at Calder Racecourse. And there is a jockey change in there. Number four, Morris Purse, is going to be ridden by Abdel Jain and 118 pounds. On to the fourth race on the card, and it is a maiden special weight event. It is seven furlongs on the main track and to my top selection I went with number four Mio Doro and I think to me the, the race reads like a little bit this will be the controlling speed. He will control this race. The four Mio Doro I'm with you Christine. I like the same horse. I thought he ran a gallant second last time off about a four month five month layoff. Coin Broker beat him that day, but he did all the running, so I think he'll get first jump on a horse like the two Tis for Tat, who's run up to nine on the Ragazin sheets and 87 buyers, but he's, he's been a bridesmaid. He yep. seems like he's caused his own trouble. I like that Rosario's getting on this horse for the first time, but I think it's between the four and two. Yeah, and I use uh, those are the horses I used in Tis for Tat. That was exactly the reason why I decided not to put the, that one on top. But uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back and have a look at the fifth on the card that kicks off that rainbow six. We're up over $1.69 million. The OBS March two-year-old sale is the grade one source to the world with undefeated juvenile champion Asia Express in Japan. Grade one juvenile stakes winners by Conquestadore, Secret Compass, and Bond Holder. King's Bishop winner Capo Bastone and Breeders' Cup Sprint winner Secret Circle in North America. Make plans to find your next grade one winner at the OBS selected two-year-old sale, March 10th and 11th. OBS, we measure success by performance. 
Express Bet brings you a whole new way to play the races. An easier, better way to wager on your favorite tracks. With a more streamlined interface for faster wagering. With more handicapping insights from our world-class experts. With more racetracks, nearly 200 to choose from. And with your personalized multi-view wagering screen, your tracks, your wager pad, and your video are all on one page. It's simply the best way to play the races. Your way. Welcome to Express Bet. Your way to play. We're back at Gulfstream, and we're going to have a look at today's fifth race. It is a 50,000 maiden claiming event, a one mile on the main track, and it kicks off the Rainbow Six. We do have a carryover up over $1.69 million. So we got to get into this race because we got to see how deep we've got to we've got to spread in here. I went with a number nine, and that's Life in Shambles. This is a three-year-old colt by Broken Vow, and um, actually switching back to the to the dirt, I should say, switching to the dirt after debuting on the turf, and I think uh, this horse has a has a, a little bit. It seems to have some speed. Right, it's the homebred for the trainer, Christophe Clement. Mm -hmm. I went with the seven, L.A. Freeway. I thought this horse looked sneaky. Last time this horse dwelt at the start. If you look at Michael Matt's stats right now, maiden special weight to maiden claiming, he's 42%. That's five for 12. And he's asked his best, his go-to rider, Louis Saez, to step back on. Horse was in a maiden special weight, seventh, got beaten 14 links. Matt's drops this horse in for 50, and he's better second time out. Yeah, he's well. The horse is well related as uh, as well, but a couple of other horses uh, that we, I th we looks like we both use number five, and that's World Changer. He's a three-year-old colt by uh, X Changer coming into this. It ran at the, at a similar level and was fifth last time. But I, I feel like if you look at those last couple of races, had been running in tougher company. Also tried the turf uh, two starts back and should fit with this bunch. He attracts the leading rider Javier Castellano. Trainer Safi Joseph and Castellano have teamed up two for six on this meet so far. So I, I think it's important that Javier is going with this horse today. You know, the one horse I'm interested in and that you seem to have used is number three, High Gauge, and that's uh, the three-year-old colt by a fleet Alex, first time going around a ground. And it seems like you, you forget, you've forgiven that last start. The horse has trained well since that race. I like that Jerkins drops him from maiden 60 to maiden 50, stretches him out from six furlongs to a mile. The horse now has some experience and should be fitter going into this heat. But this is a difficult race. I even had to look at the one Inca Saint trained by Chad Brown. Yeah, you know, and I didn't even have Inca Saint among my top selections. I use number six. That's Colonel Gian, and uh, he's been working pretty well for Jose Garofalo, and so I, I threw him on my ticket. But it, I think it's that kind of race. It just it seems to be very, very competitive. On to the sixth race on the card, and uh, it is a one mile on the turf. It is a 20,000 maiden claiming event, and that race uh, kicks off the pick five. There is one scratch that, uh, no, there's no, no scratches, and actually uh, Larry Colmus will be on in just a few minutes, and he'll give you all the updated changes of, and uh, scratches for today. And uh, my top selection, I went with number five, and that's Si Yahweh from the David Fox Barn. It was fifth last time in a 35,000 maiden claiming event, and was only beaten a length and three quarters. This filly has improved every race so far, Christina, making her fifth start of her life, but if you look at her body, Higher numbers. She's improved with each race, 48, 49, 59. The horse is dropping from a maiden 35 race to a maiden $20,000 race. And Jonathan Gonzalez has rode the horse the last three races. Today we get Louis Saez. Siawe is the horse to beat. Ran an 18 on the rags and sheets. In terms of some of the other horses, I think it looks like we both used a number 10, and that's Coco, and uh, who I think and also getting a, a break in uh, in terms of class. We're finding a little bit easier this time, but all. Also, with the bug rider aboard, we're also getting a spread in weight, too. I think you're going to get value with Coco. I like her at 10 to 1. She is by Cosmonaut. I expect her grass to be her best surface, and I like the drop from maiden 35 to 20. And you get a 10-pound weight allowance with Osorio. So I picked her second, but I think that might be the value play. Yeah, I think so, too. And also we both threw in, it appears, a number four hidden intentions, and that would be for the show spot. 
on to the seventh race on today's card. It is a 100,000 allowance optional claiming event. Mile and a 16th on the turf course. And uh, the scratch is the also eligible main track only entrant. And that's number 10, Sonia's Angel. And I went with uh, number one, hard not to like. I, I think she's just the, the class of this field. You go back, this is a field you actually ran in the Kentucky Oaks, albeit not uh, tremendously well, but such a tough and competitive campaign that she had in 2012-2013. Uh, and um, so this is the type of filly that I'm really looking to see get back on track because this a particular event that we're looking at, and she ran, this is when she won the Marshawas River here last year. And she, re she obviously has handled the turf course here. Right, we're getting a grade three winner. This is a grade three she's winning. Today she's in an allowance. This is the softest spot she's probably ever been in her life. And we can see here she likes Gulfstream Park. She likes the distance. It's hard not to like, hard not to like. Yep. I went for the one as well as you. Great three winner. I thought the three Street Gym would get the lead in this race. Trained by Kathleen O'Connell. It's a four-year-old filly facing her elders for the first time. She's a win machine, though. She's five for ten lifetime, five for eight on the grass. And you get Javier Castellano, the meet's leading rider, for the first time. Another horse worth mentioning, the eight Blackbird Rock. This horse has some pace. This horse can make the lead if Lascano chooses to. And it seems like Jose Lascano and Mark Cassie, he, I think Jose's won every single race that Cassie's won so far. So those two have been a good team. Two points I want to make on that race before we leave that race. For number one, also, there was a scratch at number seven, Floral Romance. That was one that came in a little bit uh, later on from the Bill Mott barn. That was significant. I did have her among my top picks. She's out. But also, you did mention Blackbird Rock and uh, Mark Cassie. And Mark Cassie, the barn really didn't start heating up. And I feel like now the momentum is shifting. They've had a couple of wins. The horses are starting to run. And uh, I, again, I always have the, I always say I have a world of uh, respect for Mark Cassie and their operation. They not only do well in Canada, but they do well he uh, here south of the border. But it seems like the barn's also starting to turn around a little bit. Right, and it seems like every time Lascano's riding for him, he's the one delivering. So I think you have to take note that Cassie's heating up and Lascano is his jockey. And uh, hard not to like, uh, we were just talking about a minute ago, I did speak to Michael Matz yesterday, and he was saying that she's been doing really, really well coming into this race, and he expected a good effort from her. He did say that she's a little bit headstrong in the morning that she gives the the riders a run for their money because she's always uh, she's always pulling like she's always you know gunning but she seems to be uh, at at five years old especially with the mares it's good to see them still you know eager in the morning probably good he got a veteran rider too Jay, John Velasquez should steer her home he sure should. On to the eighth race on on the card it is a fifty thousand it's a starter allowance uh, fifty. A claiming price of a 50,000, or which have to have started for a claiming price of 50,000. It is a mile and a 16th on the turf course, and uh, we do have a couple of scratches in there. And it's number five, good to look, and number 12, great rising star. And I went with number seven, and that is Happy Fella. And I went back and forth a little bit with this uh, race. Stephen, because initially I didn't have Happy Fella on top, and then when I went back and I looked at her um, trainer Ian Welk, so he just had a he did have just a, a win the other day. But this uh, uh, gelding has shown some improvement. I thought I would decided that last race was 25,000 allowance optional claiming, and I thought didn't run a terrible race, ran a pretty good race. But I'm hoping that he's going to run back to his uh, some of his uh, to his previous effort. Has a win over Gulfstream Park Service too. I think that helps. There's some one-time winners in here, so I was searching for multiple winners. I went with the six, Eurogena. This horse, two back, one from the 11 hole, got an 86 buyer, an eight on the rags and sheets. That actually towers over this field. And the way Mike Maker is going and Javier right now, Castellano, it's second leading trainer, leading jockey. These connections you can't beat with the leading owner, Ken and Sarah Ramsey. I think if you get three to one on this horse, you better take it. Yeah, probably. And you did mention a lot, that last race was nine furlongs. Now we're cutting back to a mile on the 16th. So we're probably thinking that uh, Eurogena is going to, he's going to like this uh, distance a little bit better. Yeah, he's a perfect Perfect two for two at a mile and a sixteenth, so that helped. It sure does. And then I know you also threw in number 11, and that is Make It Gold from the Jason Service Barn. Hasn't run since uh, last fall, uh, excuse me, last December 8th when he ran at Aqueduct. So, but very competitive circuit when these horses are coming from New York. He might have a say early in the race with Paco Lopez. I'm sure they'll be forwardly placed, but 
Jason Services Horse, the 11, has two races at Belmont, one of them which can beat this field, at least will be competitive, I think, in the top three. Looking on to the ninth race on today's card, and it is a starter optional claiming test uh, with a claiming price of $50,000. It is six furlongs on the main track, and uh, my top selection, number four, Tell Me a Joke from the Eddie Plisa barn. And coming into this, I thought off of a pretty good uh, second place effort at this uh, distance and also at this level. Right. You'll see uh, a horse in a lot of these horses company lines Joe's gone wild mm -hmm. this is a nice Florida bred horse around here that's got a couple wins but the four tell me a joke who I went with as well got beat to him two links last time but he seems to be the closest to Joe's gone wild a common competitor so I, I that's how I came up with that mm -hmm. horse I thought the one in the three the one is training good diabolical IPA has a win at Gulfstream Park and the three good boy Charlie looks like he'll be on the lead in this race and has an 11 on the rags and sheets which actually makes him the fastest in here. We pretty much agreed on that race. Uh, other than the, the second, third place horse, we have reversed. And I saw it the same way. Good boy Charlie does look like he'll be showing some speed in there. And also maybe number six, little Tom, he might be showing. I think I think might be uh, up close early as well. However, I think, I think we've got it right in any case. On to the tenth and final race on the card. It is a 25,000 domain and claiming event. It is seven and a half panels on the turf course. We've got a few scratches in there. Number one, Lador Vador. We also have a number four, Headwing. And number 14, uh, from the also eligibles, main track only entrant, and that is Ducati. And I went with number three, Lincoln Zephyr. And I just think uh, speed is going to be this uh, gelding's weapon. Last time out, it was really an uninspiring uh, six. He was beaten nine and a quarter lengths, but that was in the slop. And I think we're going to catch a faster track today. Right. This is one of those races on the inner turf course, so I'm looking who will make the lead, who can get over, and who can stay on the rail. I went with the 11, Pep the Champ. Probably not a horse you would first see, but six furlongs on the dirt, the, the race, the horse is exiting. Gets a mile on the grass today by Wildcat Air, half to two nice turf horses, I think. Maybe he makes the lead in here. You see, I would notice that horse, and I did, because it is, he is by uh, Wildcat Air, and I, I usually like him, usually on the main track, although uh, with that turf breeding, that should always help. And that is a today's card, and uh, just a reminder, in race five, we have that Rainbow Six, and it, uh, the carryover is it's almost on $1.7 million, and I think that we're going to have to, on this card, we might have to spread a little bit, especially in that opening that opening race on the on the Rainbow Six. Yeah, I agree. That first race, you might be able to make a case for or against everybody. So it's the kind of race you might use all and hope for a big price. And tomorrow, I just want to know, and I I know, you, and I'm just gonna, I know that you probably haven't handicapped the whole card tomorrow. But in terms of those stakes, who do you think would be your best bet? Would you are you gonna go with No Nay Never? Or are you gonna go with the uh, the other Grade One winner in there, Havana? I think Havana's fast, but I think No Nay Never's special. For him to win at Keeneland, Royal Ascot, and France, be an undefeated Group One winner, it's a treat for him to be at Gulfstream Park this Saturday. It sure is, because that horse is going to be going back. He's slated to go back to Europe uh, for this season's uh, Royal Ascot meeting. I think it's the same St. James's Palace uh, that they're going to target him at. And then uh, later on this season, they're also looking at the King's Bishop at Saratoga. It's, an, it's really an ambitious. Uh, schedule for this horse, but he does look like a very nice sort, and uh, we'll see tomorrow, because uh, he will have a, a worthy adversary in Havana, but uh, Stephen, thank you for joining. Thank you, Christina. And uh, Stephen will be back next week. Ron Nicoletti will be back later on this afternoon. As always, folks, stick around. It's behind a wall of horses. Clearly now is running up on the outside now. They're into the stretch, and here's Clearly now. Clearly now. In the center of the track has taken the lead. It's Clearly now from Talera Castle. Sing another song. Undrafted in 40 tails. Clearly now in the swale. Very close for a second. Sing another song. Around.